Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. In this episode, we get to go to Destiny Island, which is actually the final world that we can go to using a car to open the world. When we get to the next episode, I'll show you guys what I mean by not needing a car to open the final level in the game. But as for right now, before this cutscene gets started, I just want to say that if the audio sounds a little bit different, it might be because I am in my dorm now and it seems like I'm really close to the wall and it kind of reflects back, so just keep that in mind. I'm not going crazy, am I? I know exactly where this is. Yeah, this is our island. Where Nomine and I used to play together. Hey! What's up, Sora? So what you want to do today? Hey guys, am I glad to see you, uh... Oh, what? We got food in our faces? Please, Waka. Only you could be dumb enough to not notice food stuck to your face. Hey, whoa, that's a low blow, ya. Yeah. I don't know, Waka, I think selfie's on the mark. Aw, oh, not you too, Titus. Oh yeah, you're selfie walking Titus, that's who you are. You hit your head? No, uh, just thinking aloud. I know, you're thinking about her again. Oh, I get it. That would explain why he's acting all funny towards us. I bet you want us to take a hike so you two can be alone, huh? Um, I guess. Alright, alright, we'll disappear for a while. Go find her, cowboy. We'll try to be quiet while we spy on you. Hey, Sora, serious. Give the guy some room. I'm only kidding. See you later, Sora. I think it's kind of cool how they brought back Titus, Waka, and Selfie. And by the way, I am completely 100%, you know, knowledgeable of the fact that Waka would never say Titus. He was always, the, I think he was the first one to actually say Titus's name out loud in any game. But he says Titus. I know I usually go by whatever the in-game characters say when it comes to pronunciation of anything, especially because it seems like in every episode I'm like, you know, I don't know how to pronounce that. But when it comes to Titus's name, I just cannot bring myself to say Titus. So if that, you know, gets on your nerves a little bit, I'm sorry, but I just, it's just one of those habits of gaming. Like, I can't really think of any other ones off the top of my head, but that's one of them. And in the first Calm Bounty Room, just by the way, it's not like that's important or anything, we get the Judgment Slight, which I'm probably going to file that right under the list of slights that's going to go into the episode of slights that I never use throughout the game. When I do that episode, I'll probably do all of the slights in the game, even the ones I have used, and I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to organize all of the slights, but I think there's a list in-game of the slights, so I'll probably just go straight down the list. But unfortunately, we didn't really get anything in that Moogle shop, and I don't really have enough Moogle points to get the expensive pack. So what I'm going to do right now is go through all of the rooms and clear out everything just like I've done in previous episodes and I will meet you guys in front of the first plot door and we will get right to one of the best levels in the entire game in my opinion. Alright, cleared out all the rooms, and on a whim, I opened up another Calm Bounty room, because I wasn't entirely sure if there would be another unique slide or not, and it turns out there wasn't. But what I did get was an elixir with a value of 7, so that will probably come in handy later on down the line. I probably won't put it in my deck right now, but I'll definitely try to work it in there later on. But of course, another plot door, actually not another plot door, this is the first plot door in this level. Hey, Sora, what's the big rush? I know you. You're Riku. Gee, thanks for remembering me. It's been, what, a couple of hours? Uh, never mind. Are you okay? Are you still under his control? What are you talking about?
I get it. You must be the Riku from my memories. The Riku from my memories? Sounds like you're stuck in the land of make-believe. I guess I kinda am. Haha, <laughs> you're such a kid. How are you gonna take care of her if you act like that? Hey, speaking of her... What's happening? How should I know? Whatever it is, it can't be good. I'm gonna go warn the others. Then I should go... I know, I know. It's your job to look after her. Go, Sora. Okay. You know, the funny thing is, it seems like after every cutscene, I always say, you know, the funny thing is. But anyway... It's not really explained or it's not really, you know, shown who the people in the actual level are talking about. Obviously, if we played the first game, we know there was a girl named Kairi that was supposedly Sora's, you know, not, I was going to say the love of his life, but one of his best childhood friends that was not really, he's basically forgotten about her at this point, in favor of Namine. It kind of makes me wonder, we know at this point that Sora doesn't really remember Kairi, and that Namine somehow has warmed her way into Sora's mind, it makes me wonder who the people in the actual level are talking about, because how Sora remembers these people, they never knew Namine, they only knew Kairi. So if you guys know what I'm trying to say, and by the way, I opened up a save point right here, because there's a couple of hard boss fights coming up, that if I lose, I would rather just start off right here. And one thing I need to do is go ahead and equip a deck full of 9s and 8s and stuff like that, because the boss coming up does not take too nicely to the Ars Arcanum deck, but there are some boss fights coming up after that, pretty much immediately after that will be done in this episode, that do, you know, benefit, or you will benefit from using an Ars Arcanum deck, so hopefully I don't forget to equip those, because that would be pretty detrimental to me, because like I said, those are some pretty hard boss fights, but hopefully what I just said made a little tiny bit of sense, and here we're going to get the second plot door, and there's only two in Destiny Islands. If you played the first game, this boss fight will probably have a little bit more of an effect on you than it would if somebody played the game and never played the first game. But this attack right here where he plunges his hand into the ground, which he did in the first game by the way, this attack right here is probably where you're going to be doing most of your damage. Because otherwise his hands are all the way up there and he's a little bit hard to hit. Fortunately, this is a fairly easy boss fight. I know I went on a, oh, this is a hard boss fight spiel just a second ago, but I was more referring to the boss fights that are coming up after this, and I, like I said, I really hope I remember to equip the Ars Arcana back, because if I try to go into those boss fights with this deck, I'm probably gonna die. But as for this boss fight, it's fairly easy. I don't see any reason why anybody should die on this boss fight. He plays pretty low cards, as I think he just played an eight right there. And if you can get the gimmick card for this fight, it basically allows these platforms to come up out of the ground, which allows you to go up to his head and hit his head, which I believe has a little bit lower defense than his hands, but I don't know the stats and all that, so I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and speed this up until I get a gimmick card or until, or until the end of the fight, because just like every other boss fight, this is very repetitive. Okay, I have to... 
have to keep her safe. Nomine, can you hear me? Oh. Nomine. Sora, you really came for me. It's you. It's really you. I've been through so much just to see you. Yes. I wanted to see you too. But this isn't right. I messed up. I wanted to see you. But this isn't the right way. Nominee? I was lonely for so long. I just couldn't bear it anymore. So I called out to your heart and had you come all the way out to this place. You came for me and I'm so, so happy, but... But to your heart I had to. Don't worry. I'm here because I promised that I would protect you. Sora. Thank you. And I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to be in this picture. That's true. Ugh. Nominee? That isn't me. I'm not there. I don't really exist inside your heart. I don't exist in anyone's heart. I never have existed anywhere. What... what are you saying? What's gotten into you? Weren't we inseparable? Always together? But then you had to go away. I came here so I'd never lose you again. Was it really me you wanted to see? Of course it was. I know I've forgotten a lot of things in this castle. But never anything about you. Look, you gave this to me, didn't you? You have it. My good luck charm. No, Sora, you can't believe me. What am I supposed to do? Think, Sora. Think just one more time. About who's most special to you. Call out to that piece of memory that glimmers faintly deep inside your heart. No matter how far away the light gets, your heart's voice will always reach it. Who's most special to me? <laughs> That's an easy one. It's you, Nami. Who? Who was that? I can't remember, but she feels so familiar. Nominee! Nominee! If you're a fan of the first game like I am, it might come as a, a little bit of a slap in the face that we get Oathkeeper right there, because in the first game, Kyrie made a promise to Sora that they basically would always remember each other, and I'm pretty sure this is another Oathkeeper. That is really funny, game. But anyway, in the first game, Kyrie basically gave Sora the Oathkeeper keychain, which was kind of a, a present or kind of a, a keepsake just to show that they would always remember each other. Basically, a promise between the, the two characters. It's kind of a slap in the face that we get the Oathkeeper keyblade right after Sora demonstrates that he has no recollection of that promise whatsoever. And I just remembered, I need to equip the Ars Arcanum deck. That would have been an awful thing to happen. But more on that, you know, plotline coming up in these cutscenes. Nominee! It isn't you. The person most special to me. It's not you. Right? No. The girl you really care about. The one who was always with you. It's not me. It's her. But then, who... Who is she? Because I can't think of her name. If she's so special to me, then why can't I remember? Because... I went into your memories and- Let me explain this. Huh? Plain and simple. 
Your memory is a train wreck. You're not the one who's meant to protect Naminé. It's supposed to be me! But you and your messed up memories are always in the way. Sora! In that cutscene, Riku said something along the lines of, you know, Sora's memory's a train wreck. And by the way, I think we have enough protection from the Jafar card to play it at the beginning of the fight and not worry about being broken by Riku near the end of the fight or anything like that. But Riku said that Sora's memory was a train wreck. I was a train wreck the first time I played this game and saw what they were talking about or read what they were talking about because there were no voice cutscenes in the Game Boy Advance version of the game as far as I remember. But if this was the, or the first time you played the game, if you had no idea what was going on going into the game, I think you would be a train wreck too, after seeing what was going on with Naminé, Kairi, Sora, and Riku and all that, and I'm pretty sure I just beat Riku without getting hit, by the way. So, all this is going to culminate within this episode and the next two episodes, because I think the last level is going to take two episodes, but I hope you guys are as excited for the res you know the resolution of this plotline as I was the first time I played the game. But of course we get a Riku enemy card here and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not even entirely sure what that card does, but I'm gonna go ahead and take an HP boost because at this point I think we have enough card points. Riku. Want some more? Ah, Sora! Riku. Looks like I win. Riku! Stop! You are through! I said stop! Riku? Riku? Riku! What did you do? What did you do to him? Broke his heart. I'd say more like she smashed it, really. Smashed? His heart? Then, what's gonna, what's gonna happen to Riku? <laughs> oh, you're so much fun to watch. If it's a Riku you're worried about, then don't. Because Riku was never really here. What do you mean? Do you really think I'm just gonna say it? That's too easy. <laughs> oh, what to do? Quit the games! <sighs> All right. Have it your way, then. I know it'll kill you to hear this. But I think I can live with that. That thing lying there is just a puppet that Vexen made as an experiment. No more than a toy. It's laughable, really. It called you a fake, but it was a fabrication all along. Not Riku. A fake? Fake in every possible way. It was only finished recently. How could it remember anything? You get it? Its memories with Naminé were just planted, not real. Yep, that means all this time it's been picking fights with you over memories that were counterfeit, trumped up, and completely bogus. Isn't that the truth, Naminé? Oh, so cute. But behind this little face, you do awful things. <laughs> Naminé? You're so stupid. Don't you get it now? That's what Naminé's powers are about. She can enter, rearrange, and even create new memories of anything, even things that never happened. The girl you've been trying to protect all this time is really a manipulative witch who shackles people's hearts. <gasps> then... my memories... are all... Oh, you do get it. Lies, lies, all lies. Just Naminé's illusions, nothing more. 
Finding you in the chains of your own memory was central to our trap. It makes me tingle to think how easily you were duped. So close to it, we were almost there. This was our only chance to turn the Keyblade Master into our puppet, but that jerk Axel, he used Nominate to betray us. Hmm. So now, I'm left with no choice but to eliminate you. You'll pay. Don't! Huh? It's a little late for the witch to grow a conscience. Last time I checked, you're the one who fooled around with his memories creating this mess. I know, but... I should tell you that I'm in an extremely foul mood. Thanks to you, all our plans are ruined! Nominee! What's this? Are you upset? <laughs> And you don't even actually know her. Maybe not. But still, I made a promise. What? A promise I made to Namine to keep her safe. Maybe my memories are fake, but the promise is real to me. <sighs> That's why I'll keep it. <laughs> You're such an idiot. There is no promise, and there never was. You're just delusional. Must you insist on playing the hero? <laughs> Whatever. If that's the way you want it, you're going down alone! <laughs> Goofy, you found me. Of course we did. We were worried about you. And we promised. We promised that we would protect you. You won't ever be alone. It's always been the three of us, and we stick together. And that is how it's going to stay. Okay. Have it your way. More pain for you means more fun for me. I take back whatever I might have said about me not minding Larxene as much lately as I replay the game, because Larxene is probably one of the most infuriating characters there is in this game, in my opinion anyway, especially if you just watch that cutscene. That's kind of heartless, the way she talks to Sora and all that, but one kind of cool thing is that Donald and Goofy will join you for this fight, so it's kind of cool that they weren't really gone for that long. And Larxene is probably harder than Riku, in my opinion. I think that might be a, an unpopular opinion, or I don't think most people think that. But her attacks seem to do a lot more damage. And as you can see, I've already taken more damage from Larxene than I did from Riku. And things like this Blade Storm, that stuff is kind of hard to dodge. Like, pretty much all of Larxene's attacks are hard to dodge. Because if you remember from the first time we fought her, she's dead now. Not that big of a deal. But she uses thunder attacks, so she can attack you from a long way away. But she wasn't that hard, and we're ready for another bout of cutscenes, right guys? A bunch of losers. I think I'm, I'm famous. No, this isn't the way I, I won't allow. You must be nominate. It's good to meet you. 
We're friends of Sora's, and my name is... You're Goofy, and you're Donald. Yeah, but how did you know that? Congratulations, Sora. You finally found your friend. I'm so happy for you. Gee, there sure are a lot of questions. Naminé, I know this probably won't be easy for you, but could you tell us what happened? Of course. It's my fault, after all. I took the people and memories that were inside Sora's heart. And little by little, I replaced them with false memories. Hey, what about Sora's promise? Made up. It was fake. Sora never really promised me anything. Me being with him on the islands... That was a lie, just like everything else. We never met. I was never Sora's friend. And you were never anything more... ...either. No. You see, in all of your true memories... ...I was never really there. Gee. Then that must mean it was your magic that made the rest of us lose our memories, too. Is there any way for us to ever get them back? I can fix everything. If we go to the 13th floor. But, Marluxia, he... Bet I know who that is. Was he the fella who made you tamper with all of our memories? If I didn't obey, he said I'd be locked in this castle forever. I've been alone for so long. So you did what he told you to do because you were lonely? I'm so sorry. Don't be. Please don't cry. Oh. Of course. I know I really don't have the right to. That's not what I meant. What? It's like this. I'm really not happy about you messing with my memories. But... You know, I can't really get mad at you for it, either. These memories you gave me... ...in my head, I know they're lies. But they still feel right. Like the promise I made. I said I would protect you, and that I wouldn't make you cry. Not ever. Naminé, if you cry now... ...I'll feel guilty, like I let you down. So don't cry. Please. Until I get my memories back, smile and try to be happy. It's easier on me that way. Sora. Oh, brother, that's a good match. It's okay. Sora always gets like this every time he's around a girl. Aw, oh, cut it out. I thought you both lost your memories too. <laughs> Too bad. Good friends don't forget the good stuff. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there. That's it. That's the nominee I remember. Yeah. I really liked it when you used to smile. Of course, that was really only in my fake memories. But what I'm feeling now definitely isn't fake. It's real. Thank you. Well then, let's go. Oh boy! I can't wait to get my memories back! Nominee? Marluxia is gonna be up there, so maybe you'd better stay down here. Yeah. Maybe you could look after Riku? We'll come get you when it's over. Okay. Please be careful, Sora. I'll be okay. I promise. I don't think the first time I played the game, I was as forgiving of Naminé as Sora seems to be right now. But then again, you do have to remember, like Sora said, he remembers them being friends back in the day. So until he forgets that, he can't really be mad at Naminé. So Sora, or not Sora, Naminé, Goofy, and Donald, I thought maybe they would have something interesting to say. 
you considering what just happened unfortunately it doesn't appear that way and i don't think we're gonna get any more cutscenes up here and we're not so i guess i'm just gonna go ahead and end the episode here but i hope you guys enjoyed the onslaught of cutscenes that happened in this episode because as much crap as i give this game sometimes and it might not seem like it but this game is very very linear and it has a whole lot of text dialogue that i was never really too big of a fan of the overarching plot line of this game is one of my favorite in the entire Kingdom Hearts, you know, series, pretty much. But I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts 3 Chain of Memories, and I hope to see you guys back for the next episode.